joining us. Um, buddy of mine. I, I have to I have to read this, Yogi, because this is this is this is this is I know Yogi well, so this makes me laugh a little <laughs> bit. All right. Yogi Roth has been driven by the power of sports and story for over twenty years oh. as an on air college football analyst, Elite Eleven coach, Emmy Award winning filmmaker, and New York Times best selling author. A former pit wide receiver and USC coach, he is the also a motivational speaker, TV and event host, and world traveler. Veteran Elite 11 football scout and five-star quarterback co-authored Joey Roberts is much more than his Instagram bio would suggest. He's a believer, a son, a grandson, a brother, a friend I can attest to, coach, yogi, seeker, and nerd. Welcome to the show, my friend, Yogi Roth. How are we doing this morning, buddy? <laughs> Man, uh, when you say world traveler, I just think back to that time we were both in Bali. That's <laughs> exactly where my head went, man. And and now I can talk to you here. I watch you on the show when you're in, and you know how I feel about you, man. I'm so pumped for for everything you got going on. A little story, side story here. My first game I ever called uh, for the Pac-12 Network. Um, you know, it was a big deal for me, and I get a text um, right before I'm about to go on air, and I look down, and it's from Yogi, and he he just. He just says, welcome to the family, can't wait, and, and just gave me the best advice. And I've said it before on this show, and I've said it a lot to a lot of people. He said, be where your feet are. And it's very simplistic, but it's perfect. Be in the moment, be where your feet are. And I wanted people to know that story about you, Yogi. Thank you so much, bud. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, man, anytime. I think when you broadcast, you get so amped, and you are so proud and excited for that game. and. I remember just thinking, hey, I wish somebody maybe told me that before I did my first one. I was so amped up, and I remember tuning into the app and watching you, and look what you're doing now, man. You're, you're kicking butt on so many fronts. It's awesome. Yogi Roth, now the best, next question is, you're here in L.A. Why aren't you, why aren't you sitting in, next to me in the studio right now as, as, a, as an in-studio guest? Are you just too busy, couldn't get away, Kid, dad duty this morning? No, I, I, I would have done it. I, ah. I was told it was a phoner, um, so now I'm actually sitting at SC. Uh, I'm about to sit down with Caleb Williams after this interview to do a little sit down for my podcast, talk about his path. But I want to come check that out, man. I- I'm all in next time. Bring yeah, it it's in. right down the street from you. I mean, it's in El Segundo. Uh, it's not too far from your from your your stomping ground. So, uh, good segue. Caleb Williams, right? Five star recruit at Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley a year ago. He makes the transition, makes the move with the transfer portal with his head coach. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of interest in USC simply because of all that. This team was a four-win team a year ago. A lot of expectations. Now, talk to us about Caleb Williams, um, and then maybe it can lead into your book, Five Star Quarterback, and a, what it's been like to mentor and be around these great players uh, over the last decade of your career. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Caleb is a one percenter to me. Uh, he's really unique. Uh, as a player, as a human, as a thought leader. Uh, he reminds me a lot at that age. I can remember when I met Jameis Winston when he was 17, when I met Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Tua Tunga Vailoa. There was all, all of them had something, a unique trait about them outside of just being able to pass. And everybody can do that in high school now. Um, and he's proven to, to be that type of guy. I think when you talk to anybody on the staff here at SC, uh, from when he arrived, to now here they are, week one of camp, almost concluding. Uh, it's his work ethic. I mean, he does it by example. Um, he does not come out of, you know, the, the school of quarterbacks in terms of they're supposed to be six three and a half and big, t- tall pocket passes. I mean, this guy is a dynamic player. He can do everything, and he can sit in the pocket and deal. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I think he's truly got the it factor, which I define as you walk into a room, people feel your presence, and you make them better. Uh, that, that's who he is. Uh, he's a guy who, first time he got to SC, his first job, he said, was to get to know everybody's name. From the walk-on to the equipment manager, to everybody in between, because uh, he wanted to you know, make people feel like he cared about them. And not just, hey, man, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Um, but everything about him is purpose-driven. I think he's going to end up becoming the blueprint for huge recruits who are really talented as well and find success on how to manage expectations. So. I pump for him, and, and as I sit outside of their facility, um, I've, I'm looking at the book that you referenced, Five Star QB, and his face is on the cover, along with 50 plus other quarterbacks. And the reason that we wrote this book was was really twofold. One is that over the last 15 plus years doing Elite 11, parents and players are asking the same questions, and now the pressure is only intensifying 
the money is only growing, the expectations are through the roof. Nobody knows how to deal with it. Right? There's, there's, you can't Google how to be a five-star player. You can't Google how to be a walk-on. You definitely can't Google how to be a parent of either one of those. So Joey and I sat together and we said, we got to create a book that will serve as a tribe of mentors for anybody going through this process. So whether it's a guy in college now or in the NFL now or in high school, Pop Warner now or their families, we think this book, which is almost 600 pages, offers advice on everything you can dream of from how to take a visit, what it's like to commit, to decommit, uh, how do you deal with and manage mental health, uh, how do you deal with women on campus, um, how do you, when you transfer or you transfer twice, what is that process like, uh, so what's the realities around the NFL. And it's really fun as we asked over 50 of these quarterbacks the same 20-plus questions to hear their feedback. So I'm looking at the cover, and it's Caleb Williams, Matt Barkley, Jimmy Clausen, Josh Rosen, uh, up and down the list, Sam Ellinger, Will Greer. I mean, there are, it's a who's who of, of quarterbacks that adorn that five-star ranking. And, and what we learned in our process was not one of them ever asked for it. But all of a sudden, they got thrust into a spotlight. And that's why the cover, my last point, the cover is their faces, because I want fans to see their faces. And all too often when a quarterback commits to a school, you see their YouTube highlights, you see their arm, you see their ranking. But you often forget that there's a human in there. And while the pressures continue to grow, and Ryan, you know this better than anybody, the development of a 19-year-old is pretty much the same across the board. Like your brain is still developing. You're trying to figure out how to deal with this thing. And that's why in the book we added not only quarterback answers, but 40 ambassadors of the game. Holinsky family offering their advice. Brenda Tracy offer your advice. Mike Gervais, the psychologist, offer your advice. Pete Carroll, Dan Lanning, Lincoln Riley, David Shaw, Jed Fish, Ryan Day, um, all the people that I really admire in the, in the coaching and football world to say, give these guys a roadmap. Give them just one thing to take away. And, and that's what this book is, man. It is, uh, it's one of one right now. And I think it's going to be really cool to, you know, for a player and their family to, to, to dig through and be like, you know, I got a question about this. Go to Chapter 8 and talk about recruiting or whatever it may be. I feel like, you know, when I go around the country and, and speak and parents come and ask me about when they have a child that's that's super into sports and is athletic and is getting a lot of uh, notice, um, I, I love now that there's, you know, you're right. There's just, unless you've experienced it, you really can't speak to it. And to have a resource like this will be huge, I think, for for parents, right? I have a four-and-a-half-year-old. At some point, he's going to you know, realize some, some athletic, uh, um, you know, level of, of success. And, and I want to be able to give him the best advice. And, and so I appreciate you, uh, putting together, doing something like this. Talk to us a little bit about the elite 11 counselor aspect of this. You've been doing it for a long, long time. You watch how this process is built and built and built and how it's become a huge part of the recruiting process and giving guys a leg up when they have the opportunity to go to the collegiate level. Yeah, I, I love Elite 11 um, on many fronts. Uh, the guy who founded it, his name is Andy Bark. I met Andy Bark in 1999 when he kicked off the Nike camps, which anybody from that era on is familiar with. You'd go to campuses around the country or venues around the country, and you'd have a free camp to showcase your skill. Uh, Andy started it because he wanted everybody to have somewhat of a level playing field, you know, whether you're the son of, an elite quarterback or whether, you know, nobody in your family ever played the sport, uh, but just show out, show up and see how you compete and meeting him then. And then being around him at SC when I was coaching, he was always around and then working for him at the elite 11. It's been one of my life's joys, man, because I get to meet these young men at 16. So whether that's Bo Nix or Jared Goff or Christian Hackenberg, I mean, you can go up and down the list. It's kind of the who's who of QBs and, they are told prior to camp how great they are. That's all they're told, Ryan, and you know this. And when they get there, what I found to be overwhelmingly common is all they want to do is let their guard down and get some help, get some guidance. I, I, every time I listen to these quarterbacks talk in the media prior to us meeting them, they sound like political figures, right? They're just saying all the right, what they think is the right stuff, cliche central. And I say, you're more than a ranking, man. You're more than an Elite 11 quarterback. You've got a story. You've got a heartbeat. You've got a soul. Let's tap into that and help share it. So I say that with the Elite 11, and now Trent Dilfer has been the head coach for over a decade, and our staff is awesome all across the country. What we really take the most pride in, like football, that's easy. Like we're, We kill that quarterback development side of it. But we call it beyond the X's and O's, where we dive into offering them up to, with tools 
to deal with all the pressures. So whether that's now NIL, right? We had Jaden Rashada in this year, uh, the day after he reportedly was getting like nine million to go to Miami, right? Like, you need a tool to deal with that. You can't just turn your phone off. And that's what our sessions would be about. Uh, whether you, you you name the topic, whether it's media training, mindset training, uh, XO on the board, you know, out, outside of life, how do you deal with finances? How do you deal with NIL? We'll bring in the CEO of uh, of Open Doors. Like we're, we're trying to pour in in a 48 to 72 hour window as much as possible. And and I love it because when guys come back, because they always come back as counselors, whether it's EJ Manuel or Mark Sanchez or you know all the top guys in the country usually come back and coach them up. Like this year it was Caleb, um, it was Bryce Young, it was CJ Stroud, it was Dorian Thompson Robinson, um, and it was um, uh, Devin Leary at NC State. They, they they just rave about their experience that they went through it, and, and they pour back into the group. And it's a sick little you know community of hey, how do we pull back into the position? How do we pull back into people? And, and my role is really to do that over the course of those days. But then when their careers are over, um, you wouldn't be surprised, but other people wouldn't be surprised at the amount of young men that I talk to and mentor when they walk away from the game. Right. Those are the calls I get of like, hey, uh, thinking about getting married. Hey, I don't know how to deal with not playing. Hey, I just got out of rehab. Hey, I just got, got out of a, a, a tough situation in life. Hey, I'm going to quit my job because I want to do X, Y, and Z. And that's where I... I love that part of it because it, it, it says to me and our staff that at 16 we had somewhat of an impact. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, Yogi Roth, Pac-12 Network, college football analyst and uh, uh, author of the new book, Five Star Quarterback. All right, before I let you go here, I wanna, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about what, what has transpired with the Pac-12 Conference this, this offseason, right? Uh, UCLA and USC, of course, uh, transitioning in two years to the Big Ten. What does that mean for the current conference, the 10 remaining teams? Where do we sit after the news yesterday that came out that the Big Ten may be not utilizing in their media rights deal ESPN? And how, how is that going to benefit uh, the Pac-12 in their media rights negotiations with George Klyovkov? Yeah, good question, man. Uh, I think all of us will remember where we were the day that news dropped. Uh, I was literally interviewing C.J. Stroud's mom, Kimberly, and Bryce Young. <laughs> I, yeah, was on the, right. I was on the radio. I was on Pac-12 Network yeah. when we were doing it. Totally. Yeah. You're like, holy, you know what, right? And, and I remember looking at my phone, and I was like, oh, my God, it kept blowing up. And I was like, are my kids okay? Is my wife okay? And then I saw, like, oh, man, is our conference okay? Uh, and I did like everybody. You went through the five days of, you know, anxiety, depression, anger, sadness, <laughs> all the stages of grief. Uh, but then you came out of it, and, and this is why I love you reference our commissioner. I'm such a fan of George Klyovkov's leadership skills and his traits. And – how he's not only held this thing together, but every AD and people I talk to continues to say the same line, which is we're going to emerge. And I think we are. Now, we're going to emerge differently. You know, we're not going to have this market necessarily, but will we have more teams? Maybe. Will we have uh, brands continue to grow and strengthen? Yes. Do we still have 10 teams that I think, you know, top to bottom, and if you take out the few elite teams in the country, um, I think our collective 10 – could go compete against anybody. I say it every single year. And you call games in this league, there's, there's great diversity of schemes. We still sit number three every single year in NFL draft picks. So it's not like our teams are going to roll up and quit. Um, and I love the unity that every school has, has has said. Regarding the media rights, to me what's been interesting about all this is like every football analyst has become a media rights expert. And and I just, I'm not that. Like I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that the games are going to, be on television i hope and uh, and i i hope my, i get to do it for 20 more years and have the honor to call the games of of these 10 schools and whomever else we may add uh, or wherever that goes but i don't know what's going to net out i mean i read the same thing you you read uh it would seemingly see that fox is probably out of the pac-12 conversation um and i'd imagine espn is largely in the pac-12 conversation but i don't know man i i don't know how that stuff works um the thing i'm most jacked about now is going to training camps because uh, I do think amid all this, all we talked about was rights deals and realignment and all this stuff that you and I have zero say in. Right. And I, and I just made the decision. I was like, I'm going to double down on stories. I'm going to kick ass. Excuse me. I'm going to kick butt this year, <laughs> telling stories, celebrating the game, coaching the viewer, <laughs> period. Like that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Cause that's where I get the most joy. I, 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 I don't like talking about this other stuff because I don't know it. Right. Right. I'm an expert in the game. So that's, that's how I netted out of like, I'm going to have a great mindset walking into the season. George will lead our rights 
to an amazing place. I think our schools will remain united. And I think our league's going to do really well. Uh, I love the talent this year in the league coming back. I think we have the best group of quarterbacks in the country. I'd put our top six, uh, if not even more, against any other league top six quarterbacks. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why. So, yeah, man, I, I don't know what will net out, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future. Uh, definitely not where I was when that news dropped at the end of June. Yogi Roth, everybody, Pac-12 Network, college football analyst, author of the new book, Five-Star Quarterback. Hey, thanks for taking time this morning with me, bud. I really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Yeah, bro, anytime. Next time it's in person. Yes. Come on, yes. man. Yes. Right. We'll, we'll get on that. That's my bad. Ryan, can, can right, I say, hang on, hang on, hang on, Yogi. Stick, stick around for a second. What's that? Hey, Yogi, just real quick. I, I know I know that you went to Pitt, and I also spent a lot of time in, in Oakland. Um, just wondering, you, you you were roommates with Larry Fitzgerald. What was what was Larry like back in the days? Like, what was his mindset and his mentality when you guys were living oh, together at Pitt? Yeah, he was all he was, he was impressive. I mean, they put us together because they were basically like, Yogi, teach him the playbook so he could take your job, which is exactly <laughs> what happened. There. Quite honestly, probably. You know, the, the first full padded practice, he probably took that thing over. Um, but but I, I love I love telling the story about Larry of, of game one of his freshman year. Uh, we had to wear a suit to the game. But after the game, he got to wear a warm-up jacket and kind of that thing. And the game ends, and he puts his suit and tie on. And I went over to Larry, and I said, hey, man, you know, that was that big brother mold model for him. So you don't have to wear your suit. You can wear your warm-up jacket. And he goes, no, no, no. Uh, people are going to know what I'm about from day one. And I say that, and I say it to high school players all the time and college players, of he knew exactly what it meant to be a pro from, from you know, not, not necessarily the day he got on campus. He, he knew before he even got to college. And, and that, to me, was such a mindset that trickled over to everything. He was always in the facility, always in the training room, always in the weight room, always in the film room, always trying to learn, always watching cut up. I mean, that, that was his craft. And, and I can remember to this day, the day he left early, because remember, he left after two years yeah. because he did a year at a prep school. So he was three years out of high school. And I remember going up to him and saying, why are you leaving? And I'm this naive 21-year-old kid. Like, stick around. He's going to be awesome next year. And he goes, hey, you go to college to put yourself in the best position for your future, whether you're a doctor or you're a lawyer or an athlete. I'm never going to get drafted higher than where I'm projected now. I feel like I'm ready. I'm going to go. And, and when he said that to me, like, so many things clicked around the craft and the sport and him as a pro, you know, prior to even being a quote unquote pro, uh, he was, he was amazing. And I'll say this to this day, he still stays in touch with not only me, but so many of our teammates, everybody in the receiver room. Uh, he's, he's as humble of a guy as I've met for being a first ballot hall of famer. That's for sure. Yogi Roth, everybody, PAC 12 network, college football analyst. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Yeah. You got it, bro. Later. Yogi Roth, you can get his book, Five Star Quarterback, is available now for purchase via Amazon.com. Uh, for more information on Five Star Quarterback, visit www.5-starqb.com for updates and to connect with Yogi uh, at www.yogiroth.com.